How you doing, everybody? Okay, new phone. I mentioned on the last couple of videos, my old phone broke, and we was doing the videos on a tablet. That was a crappy freaking camera on that. Oh, I didn't like that. Okay, we got moved into the music room. Yeah, I see the drums behind us. Backdrop, everything like that. It is what it is. We are working, as we speak, on our chainsaw room. We've decided to go further than I wanted to all one step, but the finished product will be worth it, and I ain't got to move out twice. So we're just going to get it done and be done with it. Uh, we've got a nice little stove. It's a fire view. The glass front, so that, that's kind of nice, you know. It's important to have ambience with these chainsaws. They really like it a lot, you know. Well, I can't wait to use this. Soon, very soon, my friend, you're going to see the videos. Yeah, we'll be wedge banging, cutting a few trees. Jacob, buddy, wanted to start your saw in the morning. I'm going to wait till Friday. Uh, I got to get just a little further. I don't have my porting table set up yet. I don't want that anywhere near the music equipment. So we're headed in that direction. Uh, I want to thank all of you for being patient with these videos. I really do. Uh, it's uh, The last few days have been kind of rough. I, you know, I'll tell you what, a year ago, if my phone would have broke, oh well. We don't have cell service anyway. You got to go to town, then you got it, which is good. You get up town, you know, then somebody can call you and say, well, you didn't bring home any bread, get some bread, get some milk, you know. So that, that works and saves an extra trip. Okay, we have a crap load of stuff coming up. Some of, I'm going to share with you, some I'm not until it happens. We like surprises. Hey, let's get some surprises going. First surprise, we decided to upgrade our GoPro footage. We've been, we used them Hero 3s for the dirt bikes and stuff and because they were really cheap. Nope, not anymore. Stepped right up, got the Hero 7 Silver. It's uh, voice activated, so there's none of this reaching up on your helmet or, or whatever to try. You just tell GoPro on, GoPro off. Uh, this phone does some crazy stuff. It uh, has 30 power zoom on it, which is dumbfounding. And it does slow motion in one thing or the other. After you make the video, you can do slow motion. Like, I could take this axe here and I could drop it right in a piece of wood and it go boom. And it makes sense. Right there, it's like, well, gee, idiot, why'd you do that? That was kind of stupid. Uh, I haven't done a video in a few days. I'm quite excited about this one. I'm really happy to be here. I just want you to know that. I, I miss you guys. Where you been, you know? Mikey, yo, yo, I've been talking to him now. All of a sudden, that dropped, and uh, Daryl Burgess and stuff. Uh, it, it is what it is. Boy, Daryl got a good video up, didn't he? Uh, I like that, where he's cutting them trees. Uh, he did a great job. Happy for him. Just happy. I support him. And I talked to Kenzie a little bit this morning. Got kind of, he's happy. Got a phone back, you know. I miss not being able to do this. This is going to be different right here. Uh, it's like sleeping in a hotel bed, you know. You don't sleep good. Well, this is, my work environment's the same way. I, I like being huddled in on my little bench and getting going on this. Jacob, this is an awesome saw. That's that's in really good shape. It really is. It. Uh, I'm happy with that one. We might make a little different twist on this than what we talked about. If it is, uh, Jacob, do me, uh, Jacob Schoen, is that it? Send me an email with your phone number again. I tried to find that. It was buried by, I don't know how deep in them emails. You know, that was before Buck and Stock. Uh, we have a 394 coming in to do. That's going to be an interesting one. We got some steel saws for you steel lovers. I'm a steel lover. Too. I like all chainsaws. Just some are better than others. It depends on what you're doing, what you want, you know. That's plain and simple. Uh, but we have some steel building videos coming up. We're even going to do one for a local fella, and uh, so maybe we'll get to meet him. He's a tree climber. Uh, he, he's good. And uh, he did some trees out front for us last year. He scared me. He, he just, uh, when, you, when you see Buck and Billy climbing trees, you don't realize what that's like when you see that in person. That's the first time I'd ever seen it. It was just amazing to me. Uh, pretty happy about it. Uh, I like building for the locals a 
I love building for you guys. Plain and simple. Just love it. Uh, we got a guy. I won't tell you what his name is, but it's Dallas. Hi, Dallas. I'm going to tell you something, buddy. I know you have good intentions, but you think Tygon doesn't work for impulse line? Okay, it does. There's certain saws you might want to think about. I don't know. Uh, some of these new ruins, maybe. The Tygon, I'm understanding there's two types of Tygon. There is, like, plumbing grade Tygon, which is soft. It actually collapses. And then there's the grade that we use. And we, we buy that stuff at saw shops. Uh, you can go on all the arborist sites you want to. You can find any, if you want to get an answer, oh, this doesn't work, you can find it if you look hard enough. Tygon works. Don't go to Lowe's and buy it. You know, that's not the same stuff. I'm just, I'm letting you know that. And I, I'm telling you up front, I want you here, Dallas, but you're pushing on me. That's as far as I'll go with that. Be nice. Uh, you haven't said nothing wrong to any of my uh, uh, followers, okay? So that's good. The one rule I got, there's nothing wrong with a healthy debate between me and you, or all of us. Uh, and you guys want to tease me, like one dude left a heck of a comment. Uh, I haven't seen him before in the comments, and it's really welcomed. He says, boy, dude, I've seen that 370 years, you know, boy, you know. You know, I, I, I wasn't going to call you fat or nothing, but you're just a big guy. You need kind of a, they're a powerful bike. Okay, they are a powerful bike. And the 500s are more so. Don't think them old 370 uh, Suzuki's from uh, uh, 76 and 77, that's the two years that made them, don't run. They'll fly. They'll freaking fly. Uh, yeah, I'm a big guy. He, he made a mention. He said he probably wouldn't have much fun on 125. Well, you don't get hurt on a 125. I'm a, I don't. It, uh, it's kind of like riding a scooter, you know, just brrrr. It's, it's gasping for air of my, yeah, on it. Okay, but we got bike footage coming up. We've been saying that. Uh, it's just there's so much new all the time that uh, I can't explain everything going on in the background. Bear with us. We're going to settle in. I'm not doing a lot of saws throughout the winter. I'm going to tell you that right now. I'm not going to. I'm going to do just coast through this because we want to get fit. I got to get back in shape. I, I really got to. Uh, I had that back surgery. Okay, fine. Wham, I'm over that. Now I got to finish. I, I lost a bunch of weight. Uh, surprisingly, I lost 70-something pounds. Okay. I was a fat ass. I'm just damn fat as all. Okay. I tell you what it did. Buck and Billy says, get yourself an exercise ball, do this to that. You know what? I did it. Well, Barb did it. She heard it. So she got one. Well, the first one she brought home, I said, oh, true. I can't use that. That's uh that's not not for my size people. She said, Well, this is for me. She says, You want one? I says, Yeah. Boy, she brings another one home. She got the extra heavy duty half lump size one. And I'm gonna tell you what. Yesterday was my first little workout on that, okay? Uh, that thing kicked my butt. It did. I thought I was breaking a horse. In fact, I I tumbled off that head first and piled right up against the washing machine. You had to bend there and see it. In fact, I'm glad you didn't. I almost got that on video on that first one. But I'll tell you what. I didn't notice till in the middle of the night. It's like, oh, my abs are like... Oh, jeez, my tanks out. Jeez, where where this all come from? Ah, uh, I needed that. I need a kick in the ass, guys. You need to help me stay motivated. I have high motivation all by myself. You watch in six months who I can turn back into. I know I can. Yeah, I'm 58. You ain't going to believe it in six months. I'm already doing better than what anybody would have believed. Because you got to remember, I went for quite a long time and really couldn't walk. And I ain't walking too good yet. With the proper exercise program, building saws a couple days a week, getting out, getting my firewood caught, 
we ain't gonna talk about the diet program. I just ain't gonna. I, I just it's it, nothing to hide. But I'm gonna tell you right now. I like to eat and Barb's good cook. We have a symbiotic relationship. I want you to know that. Here's the deal. You can stop anything that you want to stop. You can start anything you want to start. You got to want to bad enough. Uh, when I quit drinking, I damn near wrecked my family over it, okay? I really did. Uh I was actually drunk when I made the decision, well, enough's enough. Believe that? It was a long time ago. It was, uh, shit, 15 years ago. Uh, but it took me a long time to realize what I was doing. I made that decision. That was it. Poured the rest down the drain. That didn't have no more. But I'll tell you what I did. You want to hear a funny story? This is funny. At the time, it wasn't. I knew that I couldn't just quit easily. I knew it. I knew I'd want a beer here and there. Okay, you're just teasing yourself. I'm going to warn you of that. But that's what happened. So I'll tell you, Barb was working at the school. She'd been there 37 years or something. And uh, she'd come home from work about 3.13. If I was home for a rain day or something, she just knew I'd be ass blasted drunk. I used to be able to start drinking at 6, 3, 7 o'clock in the morning. I have any problem with that. Mm -hmm. But... I didn't just start there slamming them. I stayed busy all day, just drank all day. I wouldn't do it when I'm working, uh, you know, in the woods around. I didn't do that. But I'll tell you what it did, because I was slowing way up. I didn't want her to notice. I didn't want to be embarrassed. So what I'd do, I'd say to take the, the same 16 beer cans I had in a bag, and I'd dump them in the sink. And uh, I'd open one. I had to wean myself down to a dozen, then eight, and then six, and this went on for a bit, and then one, then I could go days and days, but when I needed that one, see, I did, Barb's the kind of woman, if you start something, she was expecting you're going to get that done right now, so I'd dump them in the sink, she'd get home, and I'd get all happy days, I'd turn the music up, and I might have no beer, or one beer, or two beers, or six, or whatever at the time, so I did this for probably a month or two, and, uh, I got myself off it. I did it myself. There was nobody in the world going to tell me what to do. They weren't going to help me. I had to make my own decisions. Conscious decisions is what you have to do. Okay? Finally, I quit drinking. I, I'd occasionally throw a six, eight beer uh, cans in the sink, and she'd take care of these damn things, blah, blah, blah. She got used to get testy with me when I drank. Anybody can relate to that, yep. If you think you're a ball of fun, but until you've been around somebody and you're sober and they're drinking, you don't realize you're not as much fun and entertaining as you think you are. Uh, I, I never had a substance problem of any kind. I really didn't. But I had I had a beer. I never drank anything but beer. Okay, enough about all that. We don't need to get into all that personal stuff anyway. This ain't what this is all about. I'm in such a fantastic mood. It's just killing me. I'm busting at the seams to tell you guys a lot of stuff. Every time I say something in front of this camera, it uh, it blows up my face, and I can't either can't do it right when I think I'm gonna, or the scheduling doesn't work, or there's a change of events. We have to adapt and overcome to a changing situation in life. We know that, and uh, you know what I like about this camera? I can tell exactly how long I've been on here. I've been me at Jack in my jaw for 14 dang minutes. I was going to tell you a little story. Uh, I, I'll tell you a short, short one. I had a pair of Amish lads that was working me in the woods with my horses. And uh, one of them cut trees a little bit. The other one was driving horses. And I was running those or getting roads in. Just little tiny ones and pushing logs up. And uh, round and round they went. And now... They're good lads, man. They're hard workers. But the, guy, the one lad that was caught and was making awful tough on the horses because he's falling the trees this way and that way. And, uh, boy, I come around the corner and I step down through. I heard all this freaking verbal language. The one thing, if you've been in different, foreign, uh, different countries, is you can tell cuss words, okay, in any language. They have a sharp edge to them. 
and uh, one thing or another. And I, boy, they were cussing at each other just a little bit. And the horses were tuned in on that. And I said, hey, hey, what are you guys doing? I says, don't be cussing. And they looked at me because they're so polite people. They didn't realize anybody was around. And they looked at me. They were shocked. you understand what we're saying? I said, don't have to. I got the gist. Enough of that. Okay, come here. going to show you a couple tricks how to land. He said, we was on a ridge, and they were going downhill. And then you had to turn the logs around with the horses and bring them back up and down. So I was showing him how to take one that was going down straight down the hill no matter what, and these are big oak, how to turn that so you can lay them along the hill so that you can hook to them with the butt and drag them in the road to get back down through. And and I, I did, and he got it. I actually teach taught two or three Amish the, the, a few of the skills of the trade. One thing I'm going to do when we get in the woods and I get myself uh, my little fat ass right in shape a little bit, I'm going to show you a few things that will keep you living another day. I'm going to get probably a, a three different tutorial videos of what I was taught logging, okay, of uh, in the schools. I went through Soren Erickson's game of logging school. And uh, I'm going to show you the hard points of what we were taught. Not my ideas, okay. These are pros that figured this stuff all out, and I decided to use it. So... I'm going to share that with you. I understand, I believe it's in November, there is an updated course that we have here on that game of logging school. And if I can get into that quick enough, I'm going to do it. It's a three-day crash course. If they'll let me, we'll film that too so you can hear it from the horse's mouth. Now remember, when we do them, that's not me saying this is the best way or the safest. And sometimes... You just got to roll with what you're doing because stupid safe don't always work. It's not the right. But the general consensus is there's something to this type of felling. We do we directional felling. You got sights on your chainsaw. You might as well learn how to use them. You might as well learn how to put a proper hinge in. I don't care if you cut open face bore cut like we do East Coast or Humboldt like they do West Coast. There is no darn difference, okay? You still have to make a hinge. You still have to place your tree with accuracy. Both of them do that. Okay, I better get this done. I act long enough. Tomorrow we'll do something kind of fun. I got an idea as long as it don't rain.